Okay, so I've got this empty folder here. We're gonna go back to our north wind because that's always a lot of fun. And just to prove to you, I got nothing here. All right, nothing up my sleeve, nothing in this folder here. So let me try to put my um, words where my mouth is or whatever that expression is. And let's, um, let's actually go and try to just do really one line at a time, which I've been sort of, uh, has been kind of my motto with how you folks should, you know, start doing this development. Um, so I'm going to just do an NPM init. Just going to take all this stuff and I'm going to open this up. I'm really going to try to do one line at a time to sort of get this going. We're going to set up a basic Angular app, right? I'm not going to do much guessing here. The way that I'm going to do this is that I'm going to say start and I'll put in here NodeMon app, okay, which doesn't exist, right? But we've said one line at a time. Um, so I'll say npm start, and it'll tell me it can't end up finding this module. Great. Okay. So let's go in here, and I'm going to add my app.js. And this will end up loading, but nothing terribly important that's going on here. And let's go in here and I'm going to uh, say VAR express equals require express. Now that worked. I really didn't want it to work. I've actually got express installed globally, but you know what? Let's, let's kill that. I'm going to say um, npm uninstall express dash G. Just get rid of it. And let's actually just see what happens here. So it seems to have Express knows what it is. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, but one thing that I probably do want to do, and you're going to have to do this if you're deploying this, is to say npm install Express and save it. So npm start, okay, and let's actually go in and set up an app. Again, one line at a time. And once we do this, we could say app.listen, and we'll say process environment.port or 3000. Okay. That looks okay here. And so if this is working on 3000, again, if we go by that one line at a time, if we went over here and we said localhost 3000, okay, there's no route forget. So let's go over here and add that route. And again, you know that I would probably separate this out into a server file and start my database, but making it a little bit more simplistic here, we could always end up separating it out. Um, I'm going to go app.get slash function request response next. And I'll just say response.send hi. Again, if this restarts, I should get that. That's fine. Um, but what I want to do is I want to actually send a file. So I'm going to say response send file, and I'm going to use my path.join directory name, and this is going to be in browser index.html. And again, if we end up doing one line at a time again, we're going to find out that we're going to run into a little bit of a problem here. If I was to go and do that, it's going to say, hey, look, I don't know what path is. So we'll go in and again, just sort of separating things out nicely. Path equals require path. Now we could restart this guy. And now it's telling us that it can't find this file. 
So let's actually go and we will create this file. So create a folder called browser. And let's just see if we can get that error message to go away. So that's going away. That's probably sending back our file. And we can just make sure of that if we wanted to by just putting some HTML here. Eventually, we're going to put in our Angular. And we're going to use our Angular router. But for now, Okay, now we're going to want to probably use Bootstrap, so let's actually set that up where we sort of want to have something like this in the head of our document. Now, I, I know what the path is where this is going to install this, so I've used this enough times, so we always do link related equals style sheet, and I'm going to say href, and this is going to be Bootstrap. Uh, dash this CSS bootstrap.css. Now it's not going to end up finding that because there's, it's not even installed. I wouldn't know where to look for it. But if I reload this, it'll show me over here that I can't find that. Let's do a couple things here. Um, let's do Bower init. And I'm just going to use the defaults. And I'm going to say Bower install Bootstrap. I could do Angular too at the same time. So another thing that you don't have to end up including um, these Bower component files in your, uh, in your application, you probably don't want to. Because again, these aren't your libraries. These are somebody else's libraries. But now if I ended up doing that, I'll see that I've gone into my Bower components, Bootstrap, this, CSS, and I've got Bootstrap. Now, I've, I can't really serve this at this point. Um, so what I'm going to do is to go back to my app and say app.use express static path.join directory name, and this is going to be Bower components. The path.join just makes it a little bit easier. I don't have to worry about slashes and that sort of thing. If I end up doing that and I reload this page, it'll end up finding my file. You can see that I have a different text over here. And let's just go in and just make this a little bit nicer by putting this inside of a div with a class of container. So the other thing that you should probably do is if you're using Git, Let's put this in an H1. And let's say, uh, welcome to Northwind. In which case, it'll show up like that, which is good. That's what we're looking for. Um, the other thing that I just want to point out is let's, if we would say, git.status, we don't have a git repository. Let's say git init. Now if I say git.status, now I don't want my Bower components to be part of this. Um, in fact, I, I probably have a git ignore that's preventing my, um, uh, my uh, node modules from showing up, which is good. Um, but what I could do here is I could say uh, touch .git ignore, and if I open this up, I could go over here and I could say Bower Components. So if there's any path that starts with Bower Components, it won't end up using it. If I say git.status, as you see, my Bower Components went away. So I'll say git.add. git.commit. Um, first, commit. All right. And also probably. You know, if you wanted to set up a readme here, you could say vi or touch readme.md. That's the syntax for it, right? And if you just wanted to sort of start with that, again, this is not imperative, but not a bad idea to do inside the readme. 
you know, go in and say uh, npm install, bow install, two things someone's going to have to do to get your files when you end up pushing this up on, uh, on GitHub. So let's save these two things. And so now once we have our Express app set up, let's get our Angular set up. Again, really the key here is we want to do this really one step at a time. Let's go and get our Angular set up. And we'll do that by saying Bower install Angular. Um, I, I made a little mistake here. I should also say Bower install Angular save. So let's make sure that in our One thing that you could do here is if I, I think I sort of lost it here, but if I say Bower init, for some reason I don't see it showing up there. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it actually was here. But you know, by the way, there's never a problem if you ended up doing Bower init again. Anything that's installed will be in here. So you could see our two dependencies here. So again, if I went and made a mistake and I deleted this, all I would have to do is to say Bower init, and it'll even find those things that have already been installed, in which case you could see I'm right back to where I started, which is good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, put a script tag in here. And again, just to sort of see where this is installed, here's Angular. It's just, this is just one level deep, which is a little bit easier. And for Angular, I'm going to say source equals slash, again, I've got my static route set up already. So angular.js. And, you know, one thing you could do here is that if I reload this page and I type in Angular, it'll show me that I have Angular. And my thing that I like to do here is you could just specify not even the name of an app. You could just put ng-app here. And uh, my sanity check is to put some braces in here. You know, and say something like 10 times 10. And if that shows up as 100, it means, hey, look, it's recognizing that I have Angular. Now, what I want to be able to do here is that I would like to be able to set up my Angular application by having an app named app. So if, when I make this change and I reload it, all of a sudden I get an error message and the error message is saying, hey, look, I can't find this module app that you're talking about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a app.js. Now, right now this file doesn't exist. I don't even have a route for it, frankly. But I'm going to hope that I find that file. I'm going to stick it underneath my browser and uh, let's actually be a little more consistent here. Let's actually store this under JavaScript app.js and let's put this in my browser folder. So here's that folder. We're going to have something called app.js. And so just if I reload this, not only do I see that error, but I would also see that it's not able to even load that file. I could see here it couldn't end up finding that file. So let's get it to find that file again, one line at a time. Let's go back to our um, app.js file. We'll set up a separate static directory, but this is gonna be for all of our files, not the vendor files, which is under Bower components. And so this is gonna be under browser. Now, if I go back here, it'll find the file, but it still doesn't find this module. So we'll go here and now under our browser, JavaScript app, we're going to say Angular module app, and that second parameter is going to be our dependencies. We'll put our router in there at some point. Now we'll just leave it blank, and hopefully that error will end up going away. So uh, again, sort of looking at this, really sort of building it out one step at a time. There's not a lot of code here. I think, again, the problem with people get tripped up is that they try to do too much at the same time. Very, very little that's in here. Once we end up having this in here, we could pull this out into a separate server file. 
for this example, we're not going to be working with a database. I'm a little bit, and I'm not doing any testing, so I'm a little less concerned about it. But again, you can see there's not a ton of code that's going on here. It's really the, the process of bringing in, you know, all these other modules. And again, if you just do it sort of one step at a time, it'll end up becoming a lot easier. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to bring in our uh, UI router. And so the, 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 the module that we're going to bring in, we don't have access to it now, but if we actually go over here and we put in UI router, there is a module called UI router. We just don't have it. So if I was to go over here and refresh this, I'd get an error message. And again, Angular is going to say, hey, look, I don't know about this dependency. You're telling me about UI router, but I don't know about UI router. So, you know, you could do a search for this, but the Bower install to get this router is going to be Bower install, and it's Angular UI router. So this is separate from Angular. It's a separate module. There's a lot of modules that are uh, going to be separate from Angular that build up, that are dependent upon Angular. And so we'll go over here, and if I go to save that, It'll go out, it'll end up getting that, and if I go back and I look at my Bower components, here's my Angular UI router. So this is actually under release, and again, it's not enough to bring this in, I've got to actually put it on my page. So this is underneath Angular, uh, excuse me, underneath my Bower components, I've got Angular UI router. And this is going to be under release, and it's going to be Angular UI router. So once I end up doing that, this message should hopefully end up going away. And now, once I end up having that router, and then now I could go in and I could configure that router for the different states. So we'll start out by having three different states. We're going to have a state for home. We're going to have a state for products and we'll have a state for sales team. And we'll end up building it out and we'll actually look at some of these other concepts which are par parameterized routes and also uh, nested routes as well. Okay, so now that we have our scaffold set up, let's actually go and start setting up our UI router. Uh, we're gonna configure a router. And the way that we end up doing this, and again, you know, I could do something like this. I tend not to do this just because if I end up doing this and I end up putting this in, um, I'm basically creating a global variable when I do this and I try to avoid that. Plus, I might end up separating these things out into uh, different files. And again, if I don't want to do a global variable, I can end up just accessing my module like this, which you've seen before. And so one thing we haven't done before is do configuration. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to inject my provider. And you saw this in the, um, in the other presentation where this state provider is available because I have this, I've brought in this UI router. So if I went over here and I said console.log uh, state provider, and I went back over here and opened up my dev tools here and I reload this, I'll see that I have a state provider, which could do a number of different things. Really the only method we're gonna use here is gonna be this state method to start adding our states. But just to show you this here, if I ended up you know, going in here and taking out this UI router and I reloaded this, I'd get an error message because again, that dependency is coming from this module which I'm importing and the reason why I have access to it is I've actually brought it in here as you recall from this main file where I've brought in my UI router. So once I end up putting that back in I can see my state provider. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to again sort of go fairly slow one line at a time here um, and I'll, I'm going to set up two states state provider, uh, actually we can even start with one. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a state and a state has a name and it has some properties. And so 
just, just for starters, uh, we're going to say that the URL for our, and that's not a good name for a state, I actually wanted to call this home, totally arbitrary. But we're going to say if you go to the slash, this is your, your root state. And for a template, which is, again, going to be our view, keeping it simple, I am the home page. Okay. And again, let's just make sure that doesn't break anything. And now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start setting up a navigation bar. So we'll go over here and on my index page, I'll do this above my container to have the, the nav bar just take up 100% of the space. Uh, this is going to be a class, nav, nav tabs. And I'm going to put a list item here. And within this, I'm going to put an anchor. So normally, you would end up you know, doing something like this, href equals slash or something along those lines. Okay. Again, just to sort of see that this shows up. Here's our nav here on the top. So when you end up having the, um, when you end up using the state provider, you have access to a directive. Again, we've spoken about directives. We haven't created any of our own. Any of these ng dashes are actually directives. And I'm going to put a directive here. And the directive I'm going to put in here is going to be uisref. So it's a, an href, really. It's a link for a state. And I'm going to give it a state of home. Now, this state exists. Now, as a result of that, just to, I'm not going to reload the page here, but if I mouse over this on the bottom, you don't really see anything. It's sort of hard to see, but there's no link that's there. If I reload this, I'll see that this actually doesn't look like it's much of a difference, but it's actually going to go, it's actually on the bottom, um, it's slash pound slash. So it's actually aware of this route. Um, if I went over here, actually, might, we might even be able to just inspect this to see that this is giving us something. Let's just take a quick look here. Yeah, so you can see that this actually gives us, in our DOM, let's see if I can make that a little bigger. Yeah, so this ends up giving us an href of pound slash, which is how it's going to end up doing the routes for us by default. Uh, again, just to sort of prove that to you, if I went over here and I put an X in front of this so that that state no longer exists, you're going to see that this href is going to end up disappearing because it's not going to know what to how to handle that state. So again, let me put this back here. Now, if I go and click on that link, Nothing really is going to happen because the one thing that you have to have when you're using the UI state is you need to have, and we'll put this right below here. I always do a div UI view, but I, I guess you could also do a tag of UI view as well. And now you could see that I am the home page ends up showing up here. And just to go and sort of round this out a little bit. Let's go over here and let's add two more states. So when you're using the state provider and you're using, you're defining a state, um, and, and again, this is just sort of common chaining that you have with a lot of these libraries, which is a good pattern, is that you could call this repeatedly. So when you call state, you actually get the state provider back and you could call it again. Um, and I'll say this is going to be products. And when you go to slash products, I'll say I am the products page. And let's go over here and let's put that link in. So now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say that this is going to be a state of products. And now I've got these two links. And you can see the URL changes to products, URL changes to home. And one of the key things is you have this deep linking, where if I was to go and reload this page, it's going to end up staying on products. Um, and wait, again, the way that that works is that 
the state provider, when this ends up getting configured, the state provider is smart enough to say, hey, look, this, um, uh, when the DOM uh, totally loads, it looks at this, the state provider says, hey, look, is there a, is the URL, what's the URL? And it looks at the URL and it says, all right, I see what the URL is. The URL is home. I'm going to load this template. If the URL is products. I'm going to end up loading this template. And again, the key there is that none of those changes are happening on the server side, obviously. We, we, we only have one real route on, on the server side. Everything is happening on the client side. So let's just do one more of these. And just to show you that you can name these things, whatever you want to name them. I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this um, state is going to be sales team. But we'll just say that the URL is going to be team. And we'll say I'm the sales team page. Okay, we'll save that. Go back over here. And we're going to use another state. And this is going to be... Uh, our UI SREF is going to be sales team. We can put whatever we want to within this link, sales. And if we go over here, here's sales. That'll end up going to team. And we could see that we could go to uh, each of these uh, each of these pages. So it's kind of a, a nice feature to be able to do that. So the next thing that we'll end up taking a look at is how we could actually set up our template so that right now everything is being coded directly within this uh, page here. We've got these strings that are in our HTML and then granted we can you know do whatever we want to here. We could put you know HTML in here but that's going to get a little bit in, um, difficult to maintain. That's not something that you want to do. You don't want to have your presentation mixed in too much with your script tags. So we're going to separate these out into templates. So one other thing we're going to do real quick is that you could notice we could go to these different um, pages, but it's not at all clear as to which one of these is selected. And there's something you could do here. There's a I hate to say this, but there's a little bit of magic here. I need to sort of uh, investigate this, but there's a uh, attribute that you could put on here, which is UISREF active. And it's a little bit coincidental that this is active because the way that uh, Bootstrap works is that if you give your list item a class of active, it'll set it as being active. But what this is saying is that if you're... Um, if this link is the current, if the current state is home, it'll end up putting a class of active on here. And again, there must be some logic in here that says that there's, you know, this link is below this list item, but not to go a little bit too crazy about how that's working. Let's just be happy that it does work. And if we do that, we could put, again, the same tag on each of these links. And now, if we're in products, products is selected, and home is selected. And that's a pretty convenient feature to have. The next thing we're going to do is that instead of actually having the um, template in here, let's go over here and let's put in a template URL. And I'm going to put this into a slash templates and we'll say this is going to be home.html and we'll put this in a slash templates and we'll say this is going to be products.html and we'll put this in a slash templates and we'll put this in team.html. Now again notice I just did that first one as template URL the other two are templates and just to sort of show you what that does, so if I'm on products, I reload this, right? Again, it just is treating that as a string, as opposed to if I go to home, it's going to actually go out and it's going to look for that template, and it's not going to find it. And we'll get an error. It's going to actually try to make that request. That template doesn't exist, and we could create it pretty easily 
um, by going over here and making a directory. And I'm going to put this under our browser. This is going to be our code. And I'll create a directory called templates. And then I'll touch browser templates home.html. So now if I do that, and I go back and I reload this, I go to home. I'm not going to get that error message, but it's a, there's nothing in that template. So let's actually go and put something in that template. And we'll go over here. And let's put in a div with a class of well. And we'll say, welcome to nwind with router. And if I reload that, I could see that that shows up. The other thing to sort of note here is that if you, end, if you were to go and look at your network tab, I'm going to reload this. And you could actually see that if you end up, so it doesn't end up loading that right off the bat, but it loads it on demand. If I go over here, it'll end up, and it's actually going to do it through an XHR request. So let's actually prove this to you. So there's no XHR request going on at the moment, but when I click on home, so it goes out and makes an AJAX request, it ends up getting this. It only has to do it once. So if I go back here, it's not like it needs to do it again because basically the Angular is smart enough to say, hey, look, I made an AJAX request for that template. I got it. Uh, now I'm okay. So let's actually go and do this for all three of these. So we're going to have a uh, products and we will welcome to the end when well, we can say products for the moment. And let's actually go and copy this and we'll say team because that's what we call the template. Now, if we go back here, let's actually just go and modify this real fast. So this is going to be not template, but template URL. So now all of these should be loading from templates. I should see it went out and got products. It's going to go out and get uh, sales. It'll go and get home. So you have the ability to move your uh, templates into different files. Now, let's actually start building this out a little bit. And the way that we're going to build it out is that let's actually go in here and we'll say that our products are going to have a controller. And we could give this the name of a controller. So we'll call this products control, right? We name more controllers by convention, or at least I do, uh, starting with a capital letter. Now, if I went to run this, um, and I'm going to start off here with sales. I'm going to reload this. If I go to products, I'm going to end up getting an error message. And the reason why I'm going to get an error message is because it's going to go and try to create a products control that doesn't exist. Let's actually go ahead and create it. And let's do sort of our best practices by putting things in separate files. And we'll call this um, products control JS, and this is going to be Angular module app controller products control. And all we have to do is put a callback function here. This is where we would end up injecting our scope. And again, we have to make sure that we end up going in, we end up pulling this in right over here. So in terms of the order of how these things load, the only thing that's critical is that the app loads before these other JavaScripts. But that's something that you probably have figured out already, um, something we've spoken about before. So now if I rerun this, I'm not going to get an error there. And let's again, one step at a time, before we end up creating a factory, Let's go over here and we'll put in our scope. 
and we'll say scope.products equals, we'll give it an array of foo, bar, and baz. And that is not going to give us any errors. And now if we end up going back to our, we end up going back to our products uh, template here. Just we can see that we have our products. Now again, more than likely, you're going to do this with a with an AJAX request. Let's just try to figure out why that doesn't look like it's showing my products. So let's go back over here, and I call this scope.product instead of scope.products. So sometimes when you see nothing, um, it's just that you ended up naming your variable incorrectly, which is what I did, and now I can see that I have my products here. And let's set this up, something similar to how it would normally end up being set up. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we have a factory called product factory. And again, we get this error here. But we could solve that pretty easily by going over here and I'm going to say touch browser uh, JavaScript and we'll call this product factory.js. And we'll go back over here and in our browser. Here's our product factory. And again, I'm not using a global variable. I tend to avoid them like the plague. And we'll set up our factory, and this is going to be our product factory. And the only requirement, really, for a factory is that you return an object. And again, this is going to be a singleton. This is something we spoke about before. So we can make this error go away, but the one thing we forgot to do, or I forgot to do, is that we have to include it. So this is going to be our product factory. By the way, there are tools that you could use, uh, something called a wire dependency, which will automatically look at a folder and will inject all these scripts in dynamically. So that's something interesting that you could take a look at to make your workflow go a little bit better. So here we end up getting that to show up and what we're going to do with our products factory and we're just going to keep this pretty simple here. I'm going to put a collection of products. So I'll say, um, uh, let's see, we'll say products and this is going to be an array and we'll say this is going to be a name of foo and a price of six. And we'll say we have bar, a little bit cheaper. And we'll say baz, make it a little bit more expensive. If you wanted to, you could play around with the order of these things. And I'm going to have one method here, right? We'll call this fetch all. And this is simply going to return my products. So now if we end up doing that, we could go back to our products control. We could tell our products factory. Again, I, if this was re real world application, we would end up uh, getting a promise back and it would look more like this. Uh, product factory fetch all. Then function, we get products back. But again, I'm assuming that I'm just keeping these in memory. There's no database to hit. There's nothing asynchronous going on here. Again, not necessarily how it's going to work. It's not really how it's going to work. But again, just for setting this up, works out OK. So this is going to be product factory fetch all, which is going to give me my products. And if I go back here and I reload this page, I should see my products. 
So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put in a repeater for these products. I'm going to put this in my, again, you sort of have to sort of think about which template or that you're on or, you know, you're sort of moving back and forth a lot between these files. Again, take it pretty slow. And I'm going to say this is going to be a list item, UL class, I'll say list group. And this is an LI, and I'll say ng repeat product in products. And the next thing we're going to look at, we're going to look at how we can do a parameterized um, state. So for this, I'm going to put a link in here. And this is going to be product.name. So this is going to be list group. Let's give this a class of list group item. Now if we go back and we reload this, we'll see that we have our three products. Again, none of these links end up meaning anything. We haven't put any hrefs here uh, anyway. But Let's assume that we want to navigate to these um, pages based upon their names. So we want to do something like, um, let's say, slash product slash name. Well, again, just to get the state set up, which is going to be your first thing, we're going to have a UI href. And what we can do here is we can say products. Let's actually call this products detail. We're going to start out without doing a nested route and then eventually we'll end up doing a nested route. And for products detail, notice I have my parentheses here because this is going to take parameters. This is going to be a dynamic name for a route, not a fixed uh, uh, route name. And I'll say name and this just takes an object literal and I'll use the product name. So again, Angular goes in. Angular goes and um, it's going to parse all of its um, directives and it's going to replace this, or it's going to add a, an href, the appropriate href for this state. Now, right now, this state doesn't exist. Okay? State doesn't exist. Nothing ends up happening here. Although, it does actually attempt to find this state, because I have this href here. And it's telling, it's telling us, hey, look, I can't find this product detail. I mean, this state doesn't exist. So let's add the state. And so we'll go back to our app, and we'll put it over here. We could really put it anywhere, because right now we're not doing a nested state. I'm going to eventually end up doing a nested state. But we'll go over here, and we'll say this is going to be um, product details. And again, just to sort of get the ball rolling here, I'm just going to give this a template. And eventually, let's say that this is going to end up going to product detail HTML. And the URL is going to be product details. Um, and we could call this whatever we want. I'll put an underscore here. So this will end up going to product details. And I'm going to make it, give it a parameter by saying slash name. So when I end up using this, by putting this route here, and let's get rid of our controller for the moment. Again, keep it nice and simple. So product detail, that's the state that I have. Let's just see if I did that correctly. So yeah, this is not product detail. I'm going to call this product detail to match what I have here. And this is the name, which is the name of my product. And so this should actually work. Let's take a look. So what's, what should happen here is that this is just going to get replaced. Now, again, we're not doing nested routes at the moment. But let's actually get this part to work. So again, just sort of keeping this as simple as we could keep it here. Let's put in a controller. And we're going to call this product control. Okay, and Let's actually make this a template URL. And we'll go over here, and this is going to be product detail.html. 
again, if I went to rerun this here, I would get an error message, and the error message is that it's looking for a controller. Actually, it might be a different error message. Let's see what that is. So here's our app, and here I've forgotten my comma. So the error here is going to try to find the product detail. I probably just put that in the wrong spot. Let's move that around. So here I put this underneath here. I didn't mean to. Let me move it. And this is going to be in my templates. So it's kind of interesting here. I'm not getting, it basically goes and sees if it could find the template. Didn't end up finding the template. So I don't get the, the message about the missing controller. But if I reload this, then I'll get that message. Because now it actually found the template, but it doesn't know what product control is. So again, just sort of one step at a time here. I don't even have to do a copy and paste. I'm just going to add another file, product control, JS. And I'll go in here. Um, and this is going to be Angular module product control. And this is going to be what it's going to use when it instantiates my controller. Again, these are not singletons, unlike the factories. Um, and let me save that. Let me close that window down. And what I'm going to do here is that just to get that error to go away, I'm going to also need to go in and grab this file. So this is going to be my product control. Again, the order, other than the order for the app, Everything else is, is totally arbitrary. So I'm going to go over here. Let's try to make that error go away. So product control is not a function. Let's figure out why. That's usually because I ended up naming something incorrectly. And let's go back to our, so there's our products control. Ah, Angular module. I've done this many times before. So the module is going to be app. Again, these are mistakes that you'll make, but if you take it kind of slow. You could catch them pretty easily without having to hunt around too much. I knew that that had to be some kind of naming uh, issue here. So my module is going to be app. This is going to be my controller. And that looks a bit better. Let's do that. And that'll end up making that go away. So let's actually fix this up a little bit. Um, first of all, let's put something in our um, let's put something in our uh, product detail. So here's our browser templates product detail. Let's give this a class of well div. And I'm just going to put over here, I am the product detail, just so we can see that something loaded. Okay. So when you go to products, we can go to the product detail, but obviously we don't have any information about the product detail. And the way that we're going to get that information, and uh, mentioned this before, is that um, when we end up going to this controller for the product detail, uh, which is going to be over here, we have access to another um, another factory called State Params, and so State Params says, "Hey, look, here's this State Provider. State Params comes with the State Provider, and if I said console.log State Params dot name, it's going to look and see is there a parameter on this state for name. So if I reload this." And I go to foo, I'll see, yeah, the name is foo. I could go back. The name is bar, and so on and so forth. And just for kicks, I could go over here. I will end up taking this out eventually, but we could just put in a link to go back. Uh, I'm going to use my UI sref. And we're going to go back to products. And I'll just say back here. 
Again, you could see that you could we could get a little bit of navigation. This might not be what we're looking for, but it'll actually move us around. Now, obviously, what we want to do is find the actual product that we're looking for. So in order to do that, we could go to our uh, product control. And again, we can inject our factory. So this is going to be our product factory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say scope.product. And we'll go over here and we'll say product factory. And I'm going to say this is going to be fetch one by name. And we're going to say this is going to be state params dot name. So this method doesn't exist. If I reload this, it'll tell me, in fact, I don't have this fetch one by name on my products factory. But if I go back here and go back to my product factory, what I could do is fetch one by name. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say this dot fetch all. So this is also, I could either use products or I could use fetch all. There's a, a sort of common um, convention that says, hey, look, um, if you're going to end up getting the products, use the fetch all because it's less likely that the fetch all is going to end up changing. This is sort of your public interface. Maybe you'll change what you'll call underscore products, but since other people you know, you might be using this factory, it's less likely that you'll end up changing this name. But it really is six of one half dozen of another here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say fetch all, and we're going to filter. And what we're going to filter, we're going to say we're going to loop over each of these products. And we're going to return product dot name equals whatever the name that was passed in. Now this gives us back an array. Let's assume that we're going to find one at the moment. We're not really going to have much robust error handling here. And we're just going to return this. We're going to pass in a name. So if we go back up to our um, products control, we're passing in our state params.name and we should have our product. Let's just see that we don't get any errors from that, which we don't, but now let's actually see that we could end up getting our product. I'm just gonna go over here and just print this out. You can decide to format this a little better if you want to. So there's our product. We could get to our product detail. Now that's fine, although there is something a little bit wrong we, in the sense that, not wrong, but maybe you want to have your menu show up where you don't have to end up hitting this back button. And you could do that in the form of a nested route. So the way that the nested route works is that there is this is going to be a, mod, a little bit of a change here. Instead of giving this a um, state of product detail, I'm going to nest it. So I'm going to say, no, this is going to be under products detail. And so this is a nested route. When you do a nested route, what you can do here is you don't have to, you just have to say, you know, how this is nested. So it's, if you say it's nested under products, it knows that it's going to start with slash products, but this is going to be the second parameter. Now, once I end up doing that, I've got to go back and I've got to modify my um, products page, which again, you sort of have to do a little gymnastics here to find out uh, where you are, but this is on our products page where we've generated these lists. And there's just you know a minor change here where we don't have this uh, state called product detail. This is gonna be product details, right? Actually, products detail. Sorry about that. All right, so it makes sense. This is a um, collection products detail. And now if we do this, let's see something kind of interesting here. So here's our products. Now we can see that if I mouse over these, I could see it's finding these states 
but nothing seems to happen. This is also a common issue. Once you end up using a nested route, you have to go on your um, page where you are doing the nesting. So this is over here on our list group. And so right under this div, if I give it another div with an attribute of UI view. So again, this ends up, this is an Angular directive. And if I do that, so again, this is, again, this has loaded in my UI view. This whole template is going to be loading into my UI view that's on my index page. But within this products, I have another UI view. And this is going to be where my nested route ends up loading. And again, you'll, you'll get used to this pretty quickly when you use it. Again, there's going to be a time, I could guarantee you, where you're going to forget your, um, to put that UI view on your page, but you'll just, you won't see an error. You just won't see anything happening. But here, if I just reload this, I'll see my details. Now, at this point, I don't need my backlink. I mean, I can keep it there. Nothing's going to happen. But here's my three different routes. And if I was to go and send you, if I had this um, uploaded somewhere and I was to go and send you this, you would end up being able to bookmark it. You have this deep linking. So again, the whole thing that the router does, is it gives you this sort of illusion of separate pages without having to go back to the server. And again, we're all doing this by using this um, a module which we've ended up bringing in here which is the UI router and this is going to give you enough um, information to get started with our next workshop which is going to be working on the juke but adding states to it.